In the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 20, 21, and 22, God's Word says, My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. I pray as you listen to this album, that the Lord will touch you, and your bodies will be healed, and your minds will be set free, and the yoke of bondage will be destroyed, because it's the anointing that destroys the yoke. In Genesis 20, verse 17, So Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his maidservants, and they bare children. Exodus 15, and verse 26, And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. The Amplified says, I am the Lord who heals you. The New English says, I, the Lord, am your healer. Young's says, I, Jehovah, am healing thee. Spurls says, I am Jehovah, thy physician. The Basic English says, I am the Lord, your life giver. Knox says, I am the Lord, and it is health I bring thee. The American version says, The Lord, I the Lord, make you immune to them. In Exodus 23 and 25 to 26, And you shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. There shall nothing cost thee young, nor be barren in thy land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. Moffat's translation says, I will free you from disease. Exodus 20 and verse 12 says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Knox says, So thou shalt live long to enjoy the land. In Leviticus 26 verse 3 through 13, If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. And your threshing shall reach unto the vintage, and the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time, and you shall eat your bread to the full, and dwell in your land safely. And I will give peace in the land, and you shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land, neither shall the sword go through your land. And you shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you by the sword. And five of you shall chase a hundred, and a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight, and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. For I will have respect unto you, and make you fruitful, and multiply you, and establish my covenant with you. And you shall eat old store, and bring forth the old because of the new. And I will set my tabernacle among you, and my soul shall not abhor you. And I will walk among you, and will be your God, and ye shall be my people. I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, that ye should not be their bondmen, and I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you go upright. Numbers 21 and verse 9. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Numbers 23 and verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie neither the Son of Man, that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? The American translation says, Not a man, that he should break his word, nor a human being, that he should change his mind. Deuteronomy 5 and verse 33, You shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God hath commanded you, that ye may live, and that it may be well with you, 
and that ye may prolong your days in the land which ye shall possess. Deuteronomy 7, 14 and 15. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness. And I will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. Moffat's translation says, the eternal will also free you from all sickness. Deuteronomy 11 and verse 21, that your days may be multiplied and the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. Deuteronomy 28, and verse 1 through 14 and it shall come to pass that if thou should hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou should hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God blessed shalt thou be in the city and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. And the Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thine hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself, as he hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. And all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thy hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head, and not the tail. Thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day, to the right hand, or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. Deuteronomy 30 and verse 19 and 20. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayst love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayst obey his voice, and that thou mayst cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. In Joshua chapter 14 and verse 10 and 11, And now behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day fourscore, and five years old. As yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now, for war both to go out and to come in. Joshua 21 and verse 45. There failed not aught of any good thing which the Lord had spoken in the house of Israel. All came to pass. 2 Samuel chapter 24 and verse 25. And David built there an altar unto the Lord, 
and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord was entreated for the land, and the plague was stayed from Israel. 1 Kings 8, verse 37 to 39. If there be in the land famine, if there be pestilence, blasting, mildew, locust, or if there be caterpillar, if their enemy besiege them in the land of their cities, whatsoever plague, whatsoever sickness there be, what prayer and supplication soever be made by any man or by all thy people Israel, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart and spread forth his hands towards this house, then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and forgive and do and give to every man according to his ways whose heart thou knowest. For thou, even thou only, knowest the hearts of all the children of men. 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 56. Blessed be the Lord that hath given rest and his people Israel according to all that he promised. There hath not failed one word of all his good promise which he promised by the hand of Moses, his servant. 2 Kings 20 and verse 5. Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up into the house of the Lord. 1 Chronicles chapter 18 and verse 6. Then David put garrisons in Syria and Damascus, and the Syrians became David's servants and brought gifts. Thus the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. 1 Chronicles 29 and verse 28, And he died in a good old age, full of days, riches, and honor, and Solomon his son reigned in his stead. 2 Chronicles 6 and verse 14, And said, O Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like thee in the heaven, nor in the earth, which keepest covenant and showeth mercy unto thy servants that walk before thee with all their hearts. Second Chronicles 16 and verse 9, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. Herein thou hast done foolishly, Therefore, from henceforth thou shalt have wars. Second Chronicles 30 and verse 20. And the Lord hearkened to Hezekiah and healed the people. Nehemiah 8 and verse 10. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto the Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is his strength. Job 5 and verse 26. Thou shalt come to thy grave in a full age, like as a shock of corn cometh in his season. Job 37 and verse 23. Touching the Almighty, we cannot find him out. He is excellent in power and in judgment and in plenty of justice, he will not afflict. Job 42 and verse 10, And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Job 42 and 17, So Job died being old and full of days. Psalm 23, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 30 and verse 2. O Lord my God, 
I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. Psalm 34 and verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. Psalm 41 and verse 2 and 3. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive, and he shall be blessed upon the earth, and thou wilt not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Thou wilt make all his bed in his sickness. Psalm 42 and verse 11. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. Psalm 62 and verse 2. That thy way may be known upon the earth, thy saving health among all nations. Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in the darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes, shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Psalm 92, verse 13 and 14. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Psalm 103 verses 1 through 3. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Psalm 103 verse 13. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. Psalm 105 and verse 37. He brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Psalm 107 verses 19 through 21. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Psalm 118 and verse 17. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Psalm 145 verses 8 and 9. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, and His tender mercies are over all His works. Proverbs 3, verses 1 to 2. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Proverbs 4. 20, 21, 
22, 23, and 24. My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a froward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Proverbs 9 and verse 11. For by me thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. Proverbs 10 and verse 11. The mouth of the righteous man is a well of life, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. Proverbs 13 and verse 3. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, but he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. Proverbs 15 and verse 4. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. Proverbs 18 and verse 14. The spirit of man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear? Proverbs 18 and verse 21. Death and life and the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 17. Be not over much wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why shouldest thou die before thy time? Isaiah 40 and verse 28 through 31. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There's no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 41 and verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Isaiah 53 and verse 4. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Isaiah 53 and verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Isaiah 55 verses 8 through 11. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Isaiah 58 and verse 8. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy re-reward. Isaiah 65 and verse 22 to 24. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble. For they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Jeremiah 1 and verse 12. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. Jeremiah 30 and verse 17. For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord, because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after.
Jeremiah 32 and verse 27. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Jeremiah 33 and verse 6. Behold, I will bring in health and cure, and I will cure them and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. Lamentations 3 verses 22 and 23. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Hosea 11 and verse 3. I taught Ephraim also to go, taking them by the arms, but they knew not that I healed them. Hosea 13 and verse 14. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plagues. O grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from my eyes. Joel 3 and verse 10. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Amos 5 and verse 4. But thus saith the Lord unto the house of Israel, Seek ye me, and ye shall live. Nahum 1 and verse 9. What do ye imagine against the Lord? He will make an utter end. Affliction shall not rise up the second time. Habakkuk 3 verses 18 through 19. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength and he will make my feet like hinds feet, and he will make me to walk upon my high places to the chief singer on my stringed instruments. Haggai 2 and verse 4. Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, son of Jodajesh, the high priest, and be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and work, for I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. Malachi 3 and verse 6. For I am the Lord, and I change not. Therefore ye, sons of Jacob, are not consumed. And Malachi 4 and verse 2. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the storm. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 23 and 24. And Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in the synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments and those which were possessed with devils and those which were lunatic and those that had palsy and he healed them. Matthew 7 and verse 11. If ye then being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good gifts to them that ask him? Matthew 8, verses 2 and 3. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Matthew 8 verses 5 through 10 and verse 13. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, Go, and he goeth. To another, Come, and he cometh. And to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And Jesus said unto the centurion, 
Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the selfsame hour. Matthew 8, verses 14 through 17. And when Jesus was come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. And he touched her hand, and the fever left her. And she arose and ministered unto them. And when the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Matthew 9, verses 18 to 29. While he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead, but come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment, for she said within herself, if I may touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. And when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the minstrel and the people making the noise, he said unto them, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand, and the maid arose, and the fame hereof went abroad into all that land. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus saith unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this. And they said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. Matthew 9 and verse 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest under your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Matthew 12, verses nine through 13. And when he was departed thence, he went into the synagogue. And behold, there was a man which had his hand with it. And they asked him saying, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days that they might accuse him? And he said unto them, what man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep and if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? How much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. Then saith he to the man, stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it forth and it was restored whole, like as the other. Matthew 12 and verse 15. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. Matthew 12 and verse 22. Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him, insomuch that the blind and the dumb both spake and saw. Matthew 14 verses 13 to 14. When Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion towards them and he healed their sick. Matthew 14 verses 34 to 36. And when they were gone over, they came into the land of Gennesaret. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all the country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased and besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched were made perfectly whole. Matthew 15 verses 29 to 31. And Jesus departed from thence and came nigh unto the Sea of Galilee 
and went up into a mountain and sat down there. And great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind and dumb and maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet. And he healed them, insomuch that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to be whole, the lame to walk, and the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. Matthew 9, verses 1 to 2. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee and came into the coasts of Judea beyond Jordan. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. Matthew 20, verses 29 to 34. And as they departed from Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside, when they had heard that Jesus passed by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And as the multitude rebuked them, because they should hold their peace, but they cried the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And Jesus stood still and called them and said, What will he that I shall do unto you? They say unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight, and they followed him. Matthew 21 and verse 14. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. Matthew 21 and verse 18 to 22. Now in the morning as he returned into the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon, but the leaves only. And said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. And when his disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast in the sea, it shall be done. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Mark chapter 1 and verse 40 to 42. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus, moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him, and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. Mark chapter 5, verses 21 to 43. And when Jesus was passed over again by ship under the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, Come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with them, and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things and many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And the disciple said to him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. 
And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was coming, he saith unto them, Why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel's not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel, and them that were with him, and entered in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand, and saith unto her, Talitha Kumai, which is being interpreted, Damsel, I say unto thee, Arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve years, and they were astonished with a great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it, and commanded that something should be given her to eat. Mark 6, verses 5 through 6. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went round about the villagers teaching. Mark 6, verse 7, and then verses 12 through 13. And he called unto him the twelve and began to send them forth by two and two, and gave them power over unclean spirits. And they went out and preached that men should repent. And they cast out many devils and anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them. Mark chapter 6, verses 53 to 56. And when they had passed over, they came into the land of Gennesaret and drew to the shore. And when they were come out of the ship straightway, they knew him and ran throughout that whole region round about and began to carry about in their beds those that were sick where they heard he was. And whithersoever he entered into the villages or cities or country, they laid the sick in the streets and besought him that they might touch, if it were but the border of his garment. And as many as touched him were made whole. Mark 7 verses 25 to 37. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell down at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation. And she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not meet that we should take the children's bread and cast it under the dogs. And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord. Yet the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And he said unto her, For this saying, Go thy way, the devil is gone out of thy daughter. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out, and her daughter laid upon the bed. And again, departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, he came to the Sea of Galilee, through the midst of the coast of Decapolis. And they bring unto him one that was deaf, and had an impediment in his speech. And they beseeched him to put his hand upon him. And he took him aside from the multitude, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spit and touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and saith unto him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And straightway his ears were opened, and the string of his tongue was loosed, and he spake plain. And he charged them that they should tell no man. But the more he charged them, so much the more a great deal they published it, and were beyond measure astonished, saying, He hath done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. Mark 8, 22 to 25. And he cometh to Bethsaida, and they bring a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand, and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes, and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men walking as trees. 
After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. Mark 9, verses 17 to 29. And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And whithersoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pineth away. And I spake unto thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. And he answered him and saith, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit to him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child. And oft times it has cast him into fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus saith unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead, insomuch that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. And when he was coming to his house, his disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast him out? And he said unto them, this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Mark 11, 22 to 24. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Mark chapter 16, verses 15 through 18. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Luke chapter 4 and verses 16 through 21. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went in the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. When he had opened the book, he found the place it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. Luke 4 and verse 40. Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with diverse diseases brought them unto him. And he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. Luke 5 and verse 15. But so much the more went their fame abroad of him, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. Luke 5 verses 17 to 25. And it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and docks of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And behold, men brought in a bed, a man which was taken with a palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, 
that went upon the house top, and led him down through the tiling with his couch in the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said unto him, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered, said unto them, What reason he in your hearts, whether it is easy to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk, but that he may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy couch, and go into thy house. And immediately he rose up before them, and took up that whereupon he lay, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. Luke 6 and verse 6 through 10. And it came to pass also on another Sabbath, that he entered into the synagogue and taught. And there was a man whose right hand was with it. And the scribes and the Pharisees watched him whether he would heal on the Sabbath day, that they might find an accusation against him. But he knew their thoughts and said to the man which had the withered hand, Rise up and stand forth in the midst. And he arose and stood forth. Then said Jesus unto them, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? And looking round about upon all them, he said to the man, Stretch forth thy hand. And he did so, and his hand was restored whole as the other. Luke 6, verses 17 to 19. And he came down with them and stood in the plain, and the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem, from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And they that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for they went virtue out of him and healed them all. Luke 7, verses 11 to 16. And it came to pass the day after that he went in a city called Nain. And many of his disciples went with him and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bier, and they that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. And there came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying, That a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God has visited his people. Luke 9, verses 1 to 2, and then verse 6. Then he called his twelve disciples together, and gave them power and authority of all devils, and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God, and to heal the sick. And they departed and went through the towns, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Luke chapter 9, verses 11. And the people, when they knew it, followed him. And he received them and spake unto them of the kingdom of God and healed them that had need of healing. Luke 10 and verse 1 and verse 8 through 9. After these things the Lord appointed other seventy also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come. And into whatsoever city he enter, and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you, and heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. Luke 13, verses 10 to 17. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity eighteen years, and was bound together, and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him, and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And a ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work. 
In them therefore come and be healed and not on the Sabbath day. And the Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, does not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these eighteen years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were shamed, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. Luke 17, verses 11 to 19. And it came to pass, as he went through Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee, and as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back with a loud voice, glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said to him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. John chapter 5 and verses 1 through 14. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind and halt and withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity of thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man, when the water is troubled, to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. And Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him, That was cured, It is the Sabbath day, it is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. He answered them, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed, and walk. Then asked they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed, and walk? And he that was healed was not who it was, for Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. Afterward Jesus findeth him in the temple, and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest the worst thing come unto thee. John chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man? or his parents, that he was born blind. Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the work of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way therefore, and washed, and came seeing. John chapter 10 and verse 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. John chapter 14 and verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Acts chapter 3 verses 1 to 10 
Now Peter and John went up together in the temple, the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fasting his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. Acts chapter 5 verses 12 through 16. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest durst no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. And the believers were added the more to the Lord, multitudes, both of men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folk, and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. Acts chapter 6 and verse 8. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Acts chapter 8 verses 5 through 8. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them, and many that were taken with palsies, and that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. Acts chapter 9 verses 32 to 34. And it came to pass, as Peter passed throughout all quarters, he came down also to the saints which dwelt at Lydia. And there he found a certain man named Aeneas, which had kept his bed eight years, and was sick of the palsy. And Peter said unto him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. Arise, and make thy bed. And he arose immediately. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Acts chapter 14, verses 8 through 10. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being crippled from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet. And he leapt and walked. Acts 19, verses 11 to 12. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Acts 28, verses 8 to 9. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in and prayed, and laid his hands on him, and healed him. So when this was done, others also, which had diseases in the island, came and were healed. Romans chapter 8, verses 2. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Romans 8, verse 11. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies, by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. Romans 8, verses 32. He that spared not his own Son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? 1 Corinthians 3, and verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 to 26. 
For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood. This do he as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Galatians chapter 3 verses 13 and 14. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Galatians 3 and verse 29. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. Ephesians chapter 6 and verses 1 through 3. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, that thou mayest live long upon the earth. Ephesians 6 and verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Colossians 1 verses 13 and 14. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 7 and verses 24 and 25. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 6. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much more also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. Hebrews 12, verses 12 and 13. Wherefore lift up the hands which hang down, and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Hebrews 13 and verse 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. James 1 and verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. James 5, verses 14 to 16. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. 1 Peter 2 and verse 24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. 2 Peter 1 verses 2 and 4, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust first john 3 and verse 8 he that committeth sin is of the devil for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. 1 John 5, verses 14 through 15. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have desired of him.